If you're suffering from hair loss, you want to watch this video. As many as 80% of men will experience some hair loss in their lifetime, and almost one in three before they even turn 30. And the psychological consequences can be devastating. Guys, in this video, I'm going to explain to you what hair loss is, why it happens, and how to reverse it at its root, which you'll be able to start doing as soon as you finish watching this video. Stay tuned. So what's the truth about hair loss? Well, the truth is we all lose hair every day as part of the normal hair growth cycle. And this can be 50 or even 100 hairs per day, and that's considered totally normal. You see, the hair follicles on our scalp are constantly cycling through the three stages in their growth cycle. And at any given day, some of these follicles will be at the stage where the new hairs push out the old ones. So you naturally lose hair. But as I said, there are normal limits to this. And when the hair loss is excessive, it could become a problem. For men, the most common problem is pattern hair loss. And this is also called androgenetic alopecia. The overwhelming majority of men with hair loss, well over 90% of all cases, will have pattern hair loss. As the name suggests, pattern hair loss progresses in a very specific manner. The first warning signs are typically at the temples and then the entire frontal hairline. Soon the crown follows, and as the pattern progresses, eventually the entire top of the head goes bald. This slow but steady march to baldness is captured in the Norwood classification scale, which is a useful way of seeing how far along your hair loss is. The scale ranges from one for a full head of hair to seven for the most advanced hair loss. When you reach the seven, only the sides in the back of the head have hair. If you're watching this video because you just noticed your hair loss, then you're probably at the early stage, maybe a two on the Norwood scale. Now, if you're a two on the Norwood scale, this is very good news because the earlier you treat pattern hair loss, the better the results. Now, the reasons many men will develop androgenetic alopecia is because their hair follicles are susceptible to a male hormone called DHT. For reasons that aren't clearly understood, DHT selectively attacks the follicles on the scalp, whilst leaving the hairs in the rest of our body completely unaffected. Over time, the DHT causes the follicles to progressively shrink in size, and this is called miniaturization. Eventually, the follicles become so miniaturized and weak that their hairs can't even appear through the scalp. So whilst you still have your follicles, they're too small to actually grow a full-sized hair. And the consequence of this is that you go bald. Now, we'll come back to the mechanics of boldness later in this video when I discuss one of the most powerful treatments, so do stay tuned. But before I do that, I want to talk about something else. Now, I mentioned earlier how common hair loss is in men. It's extremely common. But the fact is, this doesn't make it any less distressing to the men who experience it. And even though it's classed as a cosmetic condition, it can cause a substantial decrease in the quality of life. The emotional consequences can be significant, especially in younger men. These can include loss of confidence, feeling uncomfortable in public, a dissatisfaction with body image, feeling of being older, feeling helpless, inadequate or unworthy. Some men can also become extremely preoccupied with their hair loss to the point that we'd sometimes even call obsessed. So all they can think about is their hair loss, how bad it is, when it's going to stop, if it's going to stop, how it compares to other men and so on. So yes, hair loss is a cosmetic condition. But unfortunately, it can become far more serious, with the psychological burden to match what you see in serious health conditions. Now, there are a number of popular myths out there about hair loss, the most common being that you can't stop it, that once you start going bold, your fate is somehow sealed. Admittedly, this is a kind of myth popular with people who aren't familiar with the hair loss field. Once you actually start to have a look at the information out there, it becomes obvious that this is not the case. But amongst hair loss sufferers themselves, another myth is prevalent. In many ways, the opposite of the previous one. And this myth is that you can stop your hair loss, but only by relying on powerful medications. There are two pharmaceutical drugs now available for the treatment of pattern hair loss. Finasteride, sold under the brand name Propecia, and Minoxidil, which is sold as Rogaine. Finasteride works by blocking the action of DHT, the hormone that I was previously telling you that attacks the hair follicles. By blocking it, the hair loss then stabilizes. The problem with finasteride is that you take it as a pill, which means you end up blocking the DHT not just in the hair follicles, but all over the body, including the reproductive system. So this is where finasteride side effects typically show up, the most dreaded ones being impotence and loss of libido. Minoxidil, on the other hand, is a topical medication. It was originally developed as a powerful antihypertensive medication to treat people with high blood pressure. But interestingly, some of the people who were taking it for their high blood pressure found their hair regrowing, 
which led it to being recast as a hair loss medication. Minoxidil comes as either a foam that looks like a hair mousse or a liquid that you can apply with a dropper on the scalp. Minoxidil doesn't directly interfere with the DHC on your scalp, instead it kind of supercharges your hair to accelerate its growth and mask the underlying hair loss. So basically you can think of finasteride as a drug that pushes the brakes on DHT, and a minoxidil as stepping on the accelerator of hair growth without interfering with the DHT. So, returning to the myth of pharmaceutical drugs being the only treatment option. These medications can stop your hair loss, there is no doubt about it. But pattern hair loss is a slow chronic condition, so any actions you take to stop it will also have to be long term, including the medications. And before you start any pharmaceutical treatment, you want to be asking yourself, am I really prepared to be taking this indefinitely? Because by treating hair loss with a drug, you're only covering the symptoms, you're not really addressing the root cause of the problem. And if the drugs end up losing their effectiveness, or you discontinue treatment, any hair that you regrew will fall off, and the underlying baldness will resume. Which is why all pharmaceutical treatments for hair loss must be taken for life. Meaning on top of your hair loss, you've added a chronic consumption of a drug to the mix. So let's take a step back, and there is another way, something that doesn't involve drugs, and it's to start addressing the root cause of the problem. We know that hair loss is far more prevalent in industrialized societies like those of North America and Europe, and we know it's associated with various markers of an unhealthy lifestyle, including higher risk of heart disease. And there are other environmental factors involved, like overloading our scalp with chemicals, poor quality of tap water and more, which we'll get to shortly. So whilst DHT does indeed attack the hair follicles, leading to baldness, the question is what makes our follicles susceptible to the DHT in the first place? When you start to view things through this lens, adding a drug to your hair loss worries is probably the last thing that you want to be doing. Why not simply treat the problem at its root, and in the process improve the actual health of your scalp not to mention the rest of your body? Rather than adding to your problems, you start removing them, and in the process kill hair loss in its tracks. So I'm going to walk you through some very easy, practical tips on lifestyle changes that you can start taking today. And I'm going to start with the ones that you can take away right now and start today with a minimum investment of time. So the first thing that you want to do is fix the temperature and quality of the water that you run on your scalp. So guys, our scalps have evolved over millions of years and it's come to expect certain things. And sadly, piping hot water is not one of them. When you shampoo or rinse your hair with really hot water, you're damaging the outer layer of the skin, and in the long run, probably also weakening your follicles. If you're in the habit of using really hot water for your hair, I invite you to focus on the sensation of your scalp next time that you're showering. Try and ask yourself, does this really feel good for my follicles, or does it feel wrong? So instead of using red hot water, try to use lukewarm or even cold water instead. And related to the temperature is the quality of the water. Again, our scalps did not evolve with water that contains sodium fluoride, chlorine, aluminium, nickel, lead, and so on. Limescale is also prevalent in hard water and can leave your scalp feeling dry and itchy and leave your hair feeling thin and lifeless. The easiest way to avoid these problems is by using a shower filter. This will remove the nasty stuff from the water and help reduce skin irritation and dryness. The second thing you want to do is cut down on the frequency of shampooing and ditch your chemical shampoo. Over shampooing is at the source of many hair loss problems. Every time you shampoo, you strip your scalp of its natural oils and the scalp is then forced to amp up its natural oil production to compensate, with the result that you soon find yourself caught in an endless race against your own hair, where the more you shampoo, the more quickly it becomes greasy again, forcing you to shampoo even more frequently, etc. And then your head gets real itchy, and then you start scratching it, and then you get dandruff, and then… do you see where I'm going with this? Shampooing your hair twice per week is going to be much better for your hair and for your scalp. And ideally, you also want to get rid of your supermarket shampoo. I'm sure it comes in a lovely bottle and it smells fantastic, but is it really good for your hair? Most shampoos contain sulfates, which create that nice foamy lather, but they're actually also used in all sorts of industrial detergents and cleaners, not really what you want to be putting on your scalp. In the description, I've linked to the all-natural hair guard caffeine shampoo. It contains caffeine amongst a whole other host of beneficial ingredients which have all been proven to help give you healthier hair. But most importantly, it doesn't have any of the junk that you'll find in the shampoo on your supermarket shelves. It comes with a 180 day money back guarantee, so you can always give it a try and feel the difference for yourself risk free. 
The third thing you can do is improve your diet and start supplementing. We're hearing more and more voices in the medical community that are calling boldness a disease of excess, linked to overconsumption of processed junk foods, which typically means foods full of artificial carbs with a glycemic index through the roof. And this is probably why the link between early onset boldness and heart disease is now getting more and more attention in the medical literature. And the media now also seem to be reporting on it. Now, this is a two-sided coin. As you cut down on the junk food, you make way for healthy wholesome foods. Which brings us to the question of supplementing. Guys, your hair follicles are an organ in their own right. A micro-organ for sure, but still incredibly complex. So you need to make sure that you're supplying all the vitamins and minerals that they need to function properly. I've linked to some videos in the description below where we cover basically all aspects of supplementing for hair loss, including the most recent development, probiotics, which as we're discovering now are one of the top foods that you want to be consuming to restore the health of your hair. The fourth thing we're going to look at is relieving scalp tension. And this is the last tip and it's the really, really big one. If there is one thing alone that can stop your hair loss better than anything else and even reverse it to some extent, that is relieving scalp tension. Remember how earlier I was showing you the Norwood Pattern Boldness Scale? Well, as I was saying, this scale captures the pattern in pattern boldness. But why a pattern in the first place? If it's all just down to DHT attacking the volagals, why don't we just go bold all over at the same time? Well, I want you to have a look at this graphic right now. This shows the distribution of tensile forces on your scalp, the degree of scalp tension. Darker areas have higher tension. Do you notice something? Well, the overlap with the progression of pattern boldness shown on the right is remarkable. Areas of the scalp with the highest tension start to bold first, and they're followed by those with lesser and lesser tension. Now, it's a big discussion how DHT combines with the tension in your scalp to attack the follicles, so I'll link you to a video in the description below where you can learn more about this. It's quite a big topic and I don't have time to go into it here, but I'll break it down in detail for you there. So how exactly do you go about relieving the scalp tension? Well, you can either do it manually through massaging your scalp, or you can use a device known as a grow band. By massaging your scalp or using a grow band daily for as little as 10 minutes, you will relieve the tension as well as improve the blood flow and the circulation. The effects on your hair can be dramatic, like what happened to Will, the founder of HairGuard, who started losing his hair already as a teenager. Will recently came on the channel to tell his story about reducing scalp tension, which was one of the keys to reversing his hair loss. I'll also link you to Will's video in the description. If you want to learn more about using a grow band, I advise you to do your own research. If you do decide to use a grow band, the HairGuard grow band comes with a 365-day money-back guarantee. It's entirely risk-free to try, so I'll link you to the HairGuard grow band in the description below. Now, whichever of these tips that you follow, remember that consistency is key. Pattern hair loss is a slow chronic condition, and just as it comes in slowly, it leaves slowly. Just trying any of these tips for one or two months and then going back to the old habits is not going to do anything. Guys, click the video on the screen now to learn about Will's eight steps that he used to reverse his hair loss.